been looking forward to this young man uh, to Washington and maybe some friction between uh, the White House and Democratic Senator Chris Dodd. Dodd wants to strip the Fed of its authority to regulate banks and create a new agency. Now, a key White House advisor today saying it is better to stick with the Fed. Now, here's an idea. How about no agency, no Fed? Just let bad banks fail. It might not be that simple, but here's someone who knows the intricacies. Charlie Gasparino says that, that is the only way, the only way they'll ultimately learn their lesson, that there are no assurances, no backstops. Charlie is the author of a new book on this whole saga that was decades in the making, not just a year or two, The Sellout. Good to see you, buddy. Thanks for having me. Big fan. Um, so this is really where, when I read this, I love these books and this whole period. Right. And the one thing I liked about this is you go way back. Right. And I tried to show, I mean, there's a lot of books about greedy bankers. And listen, I got a lot of greedy bankers stuff in there. But what I tried to show is that it's not just pure greedy bankers. It's government enticing, enabling the greed along the way through various mechanisms, bailing these guys out in the past. By the way, there were three bond market blowups before what happened in 2007, 2008. There was one in 86, 87. Right. Larry Fink almost lost his career right Absolutely. now. He's the, one of the kings of Wall Street running BlackRock. 94, when, when, um, when uh, Orange County blew up. Do you remember? That was another That's bond right. market blow up and then 1998 he, a really big one around the long-term capital hedge fund blowing up you know Lehman Brothers should have went down then but it, but the government but think about what they did they you know? step in they step in they throw they throw money at it and every time I noticed this because we went back and we looked at the the statistics every time they threw money at it these guys didn't say oh we learned our lesson they basically took even more risk until you had the mother of risk taking between 1999 and 2000 and, uh, 1998 and 2008 where you had so much systemic inherited risk in the system. I mean, trillions of dollars. I think I saw a number of $100 trillion of derivatives and risky securities in the system. That it was, it was basically the system was going to seize up the But, but you, is there, when you hear that the, the people who took out big mortgages and got in over their head, that they were victims and right. all that, what do you think of that? Half and half. Some were, some were not, I believe, smart enough to understand the ramifications of what they did. But, you know, listen, there comes a time, and this is what the book tried to show, that there needs to be a certain amount of personal responsibility up and down the ladder. Wall Street needs to be held personally responsible. I mean, Goldman Sachs, listen, I have no problem with Goldman Sachs making a lot of money, $20 billion in bonus money, but they are, as a result of this, they are called a commercial bank. Now, can you get a debit card from Goldman Sachs? Do they lend any of that money out? They are protected but, but by the federal government. Didn't, didn't the companies had just said, the other day God was with him. He said, we're doing God's work. And but if, he he? Was if he was really doing God's work, he'd be lending to small businesses because he's not. He's trading. And that's he canceled the, the Christmas party. Well, that's, 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 that's nice. I guess I won't be invited to that one. <laughs> well, by the way, what you said, I think that's a safe conclusion. One of the things you said, we were talking about briefly in the break, one of the favorite lines in the book is, it's easy to forget the perils of risk and leverage when you're making so much money. And I think in that one sentence, right. you cut to the gist of what happened. Right. I mean, it's scary just how much money they made. I mean, if you look at the, the year, and I'm not one of these class warfare guys. I mean, you read this book, you know that I'm a guy that believes that greed is, is, is being, has been enticed by government. It's, it's a, it's a lot, this is a lot more complicated than just... But where did about, that start? I know you go to the Community Reinvestment Act and the well, stuff that's that going it. on, the Clinton administration, and, and you know, you, you, I, I thought of you, you must be looking at you know, Barney Frank today railing against this, but he was one of the big Dodd. contributors to it, Chris Dodd. Think about what a joke that is. So, so, I mean, so now that. you hear Chris Dodd today well, with this stuff, what do you think? Well, it's so absurd, I, it's almost funny to listen to that Chris Dodd, one of these sort of enablers in government for so many years of Fannie and Freddie, is now saying, I want to re-regulate the financial system. And one point that people aren't making here, think about what he wants to do. He wants to centralize everything in Treasury. Say what you want about the Fed. It was independent. It didn't do a good job regulating, but it was independent. Treasury is now going to have power, regulatory power, directly over the banks. It's, it's, it's a recipe for the biggest shakedown ever. But it's ever. also part of what's going on here. The new, bigger, more regulating Finger government. Finger pointing. So you we know, always take things to extremes. You know, Where's this leading? Right. And, you know, I'm also a guy who doesn't believe, and the book shows us, that regulation really doesn't work that well. I mean, Bernie Madoff, believe it or not, was regulated. He was caught by the SEC eight times or something like that. Each time they let him go, bureaucrats just aren't that smart. I really we need to do something. Well, we do. I'm not, listen, I'm not saying do nothing. I'm just saying that if you really want to regulate these guys in 1998, should have let Lehman Brothers fail. They were going to fail in 98. Merrill Lynch was probably going to fail in, 90, in 98 as well during that long-term Would capital. you have let them all go? This time, there are no atheists in the foxhole. You know that.
this time that would have been really scary. I mean, the problem is... So when they did do what they did, save everyone but Lehman, you know, here's was that wise? I think so, and here's why. And you know, by bailing them out so many times, and this is the sort of crux of the book, you created a situation by 2008 where there was so much risk in the system. 30, time, 30 to 1 leverage. That means you borrow 30 times more than you have in capital. By the way, it was probably bigger than that. Those are the end of quarter numbers. I mean, this, this was lots of borrowing, lots look of risky it, securities. Look, Charlie, look what it triggered. I mean, then everyone had their hands up. But the problem is... Now we've we, got cash for clunkers. Don't we need banks? Got... Don't we need a few banks? <laughs> Well, were you saying they were all in danger? They were gone. They were gone. I mean, Citigroup was going to go. They were all going to go. Um, J.P. So Morgan might have again, surprised. And a big, let's say, Bank of America is on the Well, brink. now I think it's about time to cut the umbilical cord. We'd say goodbye? Yeah. I mean, let Goldman Sachs, if they want to, like, you know, roll the dice with partners' money, go for it, baby. But bottom line, all this could happen again. You know, if unemployment goes up to 11%, hey, you talk to a lot of, talk to some analysts, we are going to have another banking crisis. Citigroup is going to ha need to go back to the government for the simple reasons they hold consumer loans. The losses on those consumer loans will sort of outweigh, you know, they'll, they'll overcome the amount of money they're making on their trades. I mean, that's, that's going to happen. Amazing. Uh, he's a great reporter. He's a top-notch reporter. The Salah is the book. Charles Gasparino is the guy. Um, Thank you for having me. Scary stuff. Thank you. Good seeing you, buddy. Thank you very much. Or right, we come back here. We